Dry washing the California desert for gold. <laughs> Well, hello everyone, Dan Hurt with Dan Hurt Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I am here in the California desert looking for gold with some of my buddies. We got Jason from Mountain Maker Mining and Metals, Harry and Ron from Mine Operator, and a bunch of friends. <laughs> And a dog. What's the dog's name? Ginger. We are out here to do some dry washing. I've never done dry washing before, so it will be an experience. Wish us luck, and I hope you enjoy. There's the beast. There's the beast. Never used a dry washer before. This one's a little different than your typical dry washer. Most dry washers have a little windmill on the bottom of the uh, of the deck and you'll have a blower blow air through it. It'll cause it to spin at a certain RPM, and there's a little counterweight that makes it kind of shake. So you get air coming through the bottom of the ripples here, and then you get the vibration from the motor. This one doesn't have a windmill. This one has a vibrating motor, which is all kinds of loud, but what it does is it allows the classifier to work faster, and then you can get material across the ripples here a lot quicker. This machine runs a little steeper than most, and it works great in this kind of a uh, loose, fine uh, soil, desert soil. So it runs through here quick and um, does a really good job of capturing the coarse gold. Now the idea with a dry washer is it runs somewhat like a high banker or a sluice. You're shoveling material on the top. There's a grizzly or classifier that takes away the bigger stuff. The smaller stuff falls through and runs over the riffles. But instead of water flowing through this, what's happening is there's air underneath, being pumped underneath and blowing up through a very, very fine mesh. And as the air blows up through, anything light gets pushed up in the airflow and goes away. Anything heavy falls down into these riffles, these backwards riffles, and gets caught underneath. And the idea with the vibrator on here, the shaker, is it shakes it all down and those heavier pieces like gold, or in this case we have a lot of sheet light here too, uh, will fall in, vibrate down, and get stuck under there. And the lighter material gets blown up out and fall flows down in the airflow and these things create a heck of a lot of dust because desert soil here is bone dry and one of the tricks with a dry washer is you have to have unbelievably dry soil a tiny bit of moisture in the soil and it will not work now ron has a different style of dry washer here uh, you call this a puffer? Yeah, yeah. Call it and a puffer. instead of a constant airflow coming up through the riffles here, blowing the dust up, this one has billows underneath, bellows underneath, yeah. that pulse the air up and through. How about we throw some? Sure, we can throw some stuff through. Okay. We'll just uh, explain a little bit before we pu pulse okay. puff it though. And as the air puffs through, the lighter material jumps up and flows down. The heavier material might jump a little bit, but it jumps up and stays right where it is and falls right back down. The lighter stuff jumps up and goes down, the heavy stuff jumps up and stays. And because the lighter stuff jumps higher and moves, it slowly works its way down the sluice, the tray and it's a sluice. yeah it is it's basically a dry sluice and the heavier stuff just stays up underneath each and every riffle here in place yeah because we've also got slats under the riffle that make a dead air space yeah so the air is actually not pulsing right underneath the riffle it's pulsing in front of it so if a heavy piece does lodge itself underneath there it just stays now ron is uh, very energetic here and has lots of energy young the young buck ron this one one is hand pulsed. That's you turn right. it by hand and it makes the uh, air puff through. Sure, we can do a little bit here. And this style dry washer here is known as a puffer because it puffs the air through. Whereas Harry's over here is known as a blower because it's just a constant blow of air going through. They're both known as dry washers though. Now the area we are in here in the California desert is a claim. The mine operators here own this claim and they've been very generous to invite us out here today. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. And we are sitting on a schist rock. The bedrock here is a schist, 
Be very careful how you say that work. And the schist is got lots of little fractures and divots and riffles in it that is catch that has over the last billion years, whatever, caught a lot of placer gold from the desert as waters flowed over. Now this area has been worked in the past. They mined it for other materials and mixed up all of the material here and actually scraped the bedrock all over the place. The trick around here is to try to find one of those spots that they did not capture all the gold or remove all the gold that they didn't scrape and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this bedrock here and we're gonna follow it up and follow it up check in our box once in a while waiting for the hot spots and find a place and we're gonna just start clearing the bedrock in a hotter spot and getting the gold and the guys guarantee me that we will see some yellow shining material today and it looks like this team's already going they've already got gold in the box How's that arm feeling? Oh, wonderful. Great work, yeah. <laughs> Big arm. Now Harry's machine here is a bit louder because it's running off of uh, a blower and a battery with a sh uh, vibrator on it, but it's a lot less physical work. Yeah, we like vibrators in the desert, don't we, Dan? <laughs> You can take that how you want it. And this is a constant airflow. You can see it's just constantly blowing up rather than pulsing. And I like to see the rock fall down into the ripple. So instead of it riding all the way to the top, I like to see it go up and down, up and down. And now I know the goal is gonna get stuck in there. So with this kind of mineralization out here, there's a lot of sheetlight and heavy magnetics. I can only run for about 20 minutes before the riffles are loaded and I'll start losing gold. So I'll run for about 20 minutes and that's the cycle. Okay, and then you just pop the, the sluice part off, yep. dump it in a bucket yep. and get going again. Yes, sir. But what I'm going to do different today is I'm going to take that layer on top of the, uh, of the clay and pan it. And then I'm going to do another test with the clay to see if my theory here is still correct. Sounds good. Sounds good. We got, we got Jason working again. The dust level of this is actually a whole lot less than I expected. I expected this just to be almost unbreathable air out here, but this is not bad at all, especially since there's a little bit of a breeze blowing it away from us. You must have to replace the air filter on that thing daily. Hey, you gotta move it. <laughs> I got too excited and forgot to pay attention to my dust. Unfortunately, one problem with these, so it's not really a problem, but you have to clean them out every so often because the heavies get packed into those ripples and block them off. So we've been running for about half an hour. It's time to pop off the sluice torsion, clean it out, and get running again. Let's take a piece. No pickers. Quick look for anything big. Pickers. I don't see anybody. I'm going to have to do it the hard way with a pan. The hard way? That's the fun way. Yeah. Uh, you know, the fun way is actually seeing them in the sluice. <laughs> Some people don't like these little holes. 
but I really like these because when the gold gets stuck in there, it doesn't come out. Nothing visible, no, but no. it'll be there. And it's a good idea to check the first run to make sure you are on the gold. So we're gonna pan out the cleanup from the first run and see what the gold looks like. And that will determine whether we continue where we're at or move somewhere else. Accurate. Always classify. You cannot have concentration without classification. And unfortunately, when you're in the desert, this is what you have to do to pan. You've got to bring your own water. Oh, I think you'll find one in there. Our first little piece of shelite, which is a tungsten ore. Yes, sir. That kind of, that stuff's really neat because it glows bright under a UV light. And if you don't think it's shelite and you think it's quartz, um, shelite won't come out of your pan. It's, it's shelite very heavy. is heavy. It's very heavy. Heavier than the magnetite, even. Yeah, heavier than the magnetite, which makes panning this really exciting. Come on, there's gonna be a picker in here. This is the oversized stuff. This is the, the big stuff he's got going on here. And all that white you see that's, that's she -light. washing out at the back is all she light. All she light. So we're in the right spot. If you don't get she light out here, you're digging in the wrong spot. Come on, picker. Come on, picker. In the first run. See, the clays came apart. Sometimes you get nuggets in the clay that's smaller than the classification, so. Mm -hmm. it's not no pickers good, in the first man. run. Then the oversized. And the 20 mesh. A piece or two in the 20 mesh would be nice, and that would show us a nice picture of gold. And I'm so, going fast on this because I don't, I don't, you know, it's going in this thing, and you're keeping that in I want to see, it later, I want to see what's uh, what's in the spot, you know. Yeah. If I meticulously pan this for every little speck, you know, we're gonna be here all day. If we weren't so excited about seeing what kind of gold is here, we probably should be over there actually running the machine. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but we want to see the gold. And nothing, nothing in the 20. So unless there's a whole lot in the fine stuff, it might mean we have to switch our spots a little. Harry got excited about something. Yeah, a little speck. Yeah, just do that. Little speck. Trying to escape out of the pan. That means I gotta change over now. Ooh, I have to go ridiculous. really slow because the she light is kind of a pain. I see one guy right there. It'll the gold will sit right on top of the she light in the pan. It's very frustrating. I think I saw a good one at the top there. Mm -hmm. That was one. Hopefully it's got some brothers and sisters. You also had a little floaty seed that's very bright and yellow in there. That... Yeah, that's not gold. <laughs> yeah, we got a couple pieces in there. Let me do a, let me cheat real quick for you guys. Let's speed this up for your camera. Oh, the shoe light runs to the top. There's your gold right there. Well, I moved it. I messed up. No, I just could bump it back up there. Yeah, here we go. There's a piece. Oh, yep. You might have to put this in the expert of Dan here. I'm going to put bring out the close-up too, because that I can see how jagged that is. That'll mm -hmm. look really nice under the close-up camera. Yeah. Nice jagged gold. Nice jagged gold. This stuff is fresh from the stone. But I think that's also a feature of desert gold, because it doesn't have so much water to move it around and smooth it off. Okay, we are on the gold. There is no point in moving. The fine stuff did have a lot of gold, although I did see a spot over there that intrigued me. My spidey sense went off. So maybe we'll try that next? You bet. <laughs> it's right beside where they were digging. They were digging right there and they did very well. For some reason, I saw this, watching this bedrock here, step, 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 and then it goes into the overburden, not the overburden, but the, the pay dirt there. So I'd like to run the next run from right there. And we can even see the bedrock up there. It's still stepping up. So let's just walk up the bank and see what we find. Here we got Dan Hurd hurting the dirt. Don't hurt the dirt. For some reason, this spot is calling to me. It's got your name on it. We got two cameras, three cameras on Dan. <laughs> Dan can't go anywhere without a camera on him. Yeah. No, it's no. Like a, it's like a press conference out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, the last scoop of my run is working through right now. Last little bit going through. It's about a 25 minute run, I think. And we'll see if we had any gold in my hot spot. Oh, it got quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Ron's getting ready to pan on stuff out of the puffer if you want to. Okay, we'll have a look at that too. Definitely get to see two clean outs at once. Harry's cleaning out for me. I'm gonna check to see if there's any nuggets up top. You can actually see them when you do this if there's big pieces, eh? Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's uh it's they're, rare. They're not, they're not too dirty. No. There's a piece of iron right there. Yep. Well, if there's any gold in the sluice, it's now in the bin. Oh, oh, is oh hey, it's a picker. Yeah. <laughs> you can pick it up, it's a picker. Is this Ron's high banking? Yep. No. Oh, high banking, the dry washing. Dry, dry washing. washing. Oh, yeah. If we had enough water, it could be high banking. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, two pickers. Can two I pickers. Can two, I pickers. two pickers. Hold on. If you got tiny fingers, you get more pickers. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter how long it takes you to pick it up. <laughs> Might take you a week, but if you can pick it up, it's a picker. Got it. Got it. <laughs> nice. That's two. Two pickers. You wanted to see the shelite? Right there. Yeah. There it is. All this white stuff, that's, that's all tongue. shelite. Wow. Tungsten ore. Yes. Tungsten ore. We always get, like when we, uh, we bring the church kids out here, you know, oh, the junior highs and yeah. stuff, junior highs. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did something wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. There's lots in this tray. There's none in that tray. Yeah, that's very cool. I do that. What do you do? Get them out of order? Yeah, yeah. I did that. That's okay. That'll be good. I'll, I'll pan that by itself. Okay, I'm doing the oversized stuff first, and I'm just doing it two classifications, big and small. I was joking with them about how they're all this con or all this. Uh, screening out here in the desert and when you have water we don't i don't worry about classification no not at all, <laughs> not at <laughs> all. Run it. wouldn't it be nice to have the amount of water we have back home in a situation like this totally game changer we would be able to shovel as fat all all of us could be shoveling as fast as we want to into a big high banker all day long Look at that like you're on a good spot okay let's see any big gold not seeing any gold that's big lots of shelite lots of ironstone no gold. It's all in the small stuff. Okay, now let's check out the fine stuff. This should be where all the gold is. The shelite start, is starting to poke itself out. That's the white material in there. It's heavier than the iron, so it comes and shows itself last. It's not as heavy as the gold, but because it is so heavy, it actually messes with how the gold will settle. Sometimes you'll see the gold on top of the shelite. Alrighty, look at all that white. That's all shelite. I'll go quick, I'll do one quick reveal, and then I'll go take time and show, see how much gold's actually there. Oh, look at that, there's gold all around, but nothing big woohoo. Okay, I'll put that all in one spot, get a close up of it. Yeah. Well, there's the gold from my run. It's not as much as I had hoped for, but really, is it ever as much as you hoped for? No. Never. Not bad stuff. Really coarse desert gold. Now I think I need to challenge Jason. Don't do this, Jason. And one or two pieces are technically pickers because I can pick them up, but they are very small. Well, there we go. My first attempt at dry washing in the California desert, and I've got myself some gold. Harry from Mine Operator offered to let me take that home, so I will, and I'm gonna put it under the microscope and see what it looks like. It should be amazing. But that was only a half hour run. Let's do another. We're here all day. <laughs> It's Jason's turn. And while Jason does his run, I think I'm gonna grab the metal detector and poke around a bit. Well, I'm here to dry wash today, not metal detect, but I did find a signal, so let's dig it and find out. It's a nice signal. There it is, a little piece of aluminum swarf off of someone's dry washer. Well, another nice signal. Let's look for that one. Foiled again. So you done your two hour run? Yeah, I'm done. I'm ready to go. Oh, you cleared a pretty big area. My strategy is just run more volume than you. Okay, okay. <laughs> if I get more through, I'm gonna get more gold. We got a big pile here. We've moved a lot of dirt. <laughs> I'm, su I'm surprised. 
Uh oh, there's cheering going on. That's not a good sign for the competition. I can't put this back together again. That is awesome. Does that count as a picker? That is totally a picker. Sure does. Uh oh, I've only got one hand. There. Let's get that stick out of the way. You just beat me in that one piece alone. <laughs> That's a nice, bright little piece. Well done. Now I'm not putting any more of that piece on camera, so if you want to see that piece, you gotta check out Jason's channel. Well, I think it's round two for me. I'm not gonna film this round, I'm just gonna show you what I get at the end. Silence is so nice. There's my second run done. I don't think there's any hope I can outdo what Jason just did though. I think we can tell that Jason won the competition in one run. Could take me two runs to even come close. But let's hope. Hope for a nugget. Harry, what's the biggest nugget you found here? Half gram. Half gram? Heck. In this guy. In this. Excellent. But I know people that found larger, but it's rare. Yeah. Rare. Stop going uphill. Yes, yes, because I was a lot higher than you guys were, so uh, it will tell us something. You were doing what I've been wanting to do for a while, is keep, keep going on this. Flat. Move up to the flat? Yeah. Yeah, and it did flatten out, and it, I think it actually dipped down some. Ron has a good eye for this. Ron can see the gold? Oh yeah. I think I see a piece. I, it might be. I just see something brighter than anything else. Like small, but it seems to be brighter. It's white. It's, it's white. white yeah, it's because you got gold fever. I know. Yeah. Everything looks like gold. <laughs> it's those yellow glasses you're wearing. <laughs> I should never challenge people to things. I'm far too competitive. <laughs> I still hope Jason got the best gold of the day. Actually, no, I hope there's something really good in there. That would be nice. But I'd be very happy if Jason got the best gold of the day. Harry's taking good care of me. He just gave me new water to pan in. Nothing like clean water. Here's the quarter inch stuff between quarter and half. If there was a piece in here, that would, you know, make the day. It would be the piece of the day. Anyone got any clean water? Okay, let's have a look. See a couple pieces of shoe light in there. Let's move around so the camera can see it. Oh yeah, a lot of she light. Okay, let's see what we have. We've panned down the fine stuff. I'm starting to see gold all through it. There's little pieces shining back everywhere. I will have to get out the close-up camera. Oh, never mind. I don't need the close-up camera. There's a picker. I got a picker and it's a nice one. Well done. There it is. So who won? Whoop, there it is. Dan, I think you beat me. You think so? Yours was pretty big too. Yeah. I think we're going to have to call that a tie. A tie, a draw. Yep. Like the friendly neighborhood, <laughs> the you know, Canada, US, we've always been friendly. That's right. It's a draw. In classic Canadian fashion, we're going to call it a tie. There we go. <laughs> Let's get the close up on that and the rest. There we go. There's the gold from the day or from the second run. There's a lot more in my snuffer bottle already from the first run. That is really nice, including a very nice picker. And now for some microscope shots. Here is the cons under the microscope. Now I can't tell you what magnification this is, but it is a lot. Beautiful gold in there. It's kind of hard to focus at this magnification. But what you see in there, the white rock is shelite. That's an ore of tungsten, very heavy, and it comes out just like the black sands would normally in your pan. The black sands in there are magnetite and hematite and probably some sulfides of some sort as well. And the yellow rock, of course, is what we're all looking for. That's the gold. Look how jagged this stuff is. It is crazy how fresh this is out of the rock and being in a desert, it doesn't have water pushing it around and rounding it over. So unlike the plaster gold we get, this stuff is sharp and jagged and beautiful. Well, that was awesome. Dry washing the California desert and finding gold. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me that thumbs up and please check out Jason, Mount Baker Mining and Metals and Harry, mine operator. 
Hope you're having a great day. Until the next one. Bye.